continually confronted with the bones of bizarre creatures. How do they approach something they haven't seen before? Most often, paleontologists dig up the bones of a partial skeleton. The rest of the remains have been eaten by predators, scattered by a shifting geology, or simply eroded from exposure. These partial remains present basic questions about the creature. Why was it designed in this way? What behavior can be inferred about the beast that wore these bones? Paleontologists are faced with these challenges every day. But how does this work in practice? What are the first things a scientist does when faced with a set of mysterious, anonymous bones? Presented with an animal like this, it's a really good question is to see if we can figure out what kind of animal it was, how, how it lived its life. Certainly, it's a very interesting sort of animal. Looking at the structure of the teeth is, is one of the first things we can do to see what an animal was like and, and what it did. One thing that's remarkable about these teeth is these are the teeth of a predator. Not only are they sort of sharp and pointy, but a key feature is that they're actually directed backwards. We call that recurve. It's actually very similar to what we see in the teeth uh, on the skull of Velociraptor right here. What that means, if you're a prey item, is that it's pretty easy to get in, but it's pretty tough to get out. Another attribute that we can see by looking at this is this animal had really big jaw muscles. This whole cavity in here is absolutely enormous for a skull of this size, and all of these muscles sat right down in here. What that suggests is that whatever it was biting, whatever prey organism, it was actually biting it very hard. This skull looks like a reptile to me, but it's, it's not a dinosaur. Dinosaurs had a particular 